Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you. And joining us in studio, Bill's guard, Ryan Bates. He's one of our fresh off the field interviews brought to you by Austin Air, the official clean air provider of the Buffalo Bills. How we doing, Rye? Doing great. How are you? Good. Nice. Good. Good to see Get you. a little respite from the weather. You got a nice 50-degree practice day. You're out on the grass field. It's, it's beautiful today. Did, you actually, did you guys actually sweat out there today? No, <laughs> I'm sweating right now. Because I'll tell you what, it's not easy to do when it's zero. No, it's not easy to do. Last last game, I wasn't sweating at all. Yeah, oh I was going to say, did you no. even? I don't think I even showered after the game. I did shower after the game. <laughs> I just want to make that. We're going to start yeah, calling yeah, you, you Big Dirty yeah. to go but with Little Dirty. You did it out of habit, right? did it out of habit. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, We had we were talking in the break. So many things change when you get into a game that is like dangerous, bitter, cold, zero, that, like it was in, in Chicago. It is windy. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the thing that you're going to take away from that game? Like, gosh, I gotta do, like, I'm going to do this different next time or anything like that out there for you? Or um, I'm happy I did this? So I'm happy. I'm usually not a sleeves guy. Right. Uh, but given the fact it was negative 15 degrees with the wind chill, I, f- I felt that I had to wear uh, some, put some, right. put some sleeves on. I wore the skull cap as well. Um, you mentioned the wind. The wind was the worst part of it. Yeah. Like, you know, if it was no wind at all, I would go no sleeves, no problem whatsoever. But right. because of the wind, it was such yeah, strong wind. You could, we could see the it refs' was like pants cutting, rippling. It like, was like cutting on your skin. Like, yeah. felt like little paper cuts. Yeah. Um, yeah it, so. we, we could tell that it was, um, yeah, when, when you're out there, your internal furnace, if there's no wind, your internal furnace kind of gets you okay, yes. right? But yes. I actually wore, this is the first time I did this, I actually wore some scuba gear on underneath. Oh, oh you did? You okay. Yeah. Um, it was c- kind of short. They weren't meant for tall people, so my belly button was sticking out. But <laughs> my belly button was cold, but everything everything else right. was warm. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, but I, I, I was happy I, I, uh, I took the necessary precautions I to do that. I think Josh mentioned that in his press conference last week, that some guys... Wear some of those. I guess Brady used to wear them when he yeah, was up in New guys, England. There's a lot, of guys, a lot of guys this past game I was wearing them. Okay. I know that's um, – it's great because it is a little bit airtight and it holds it in and it completely busts the wind. Mm-hmm. But the, the problem is you, sometimes you can't lift – you know, they're made for flopping your feet in the wind, in the water, not for raising your knees to your – Yeah. You know, above your waist to run. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you get bound up. With it, no problem like that with you. No, either. I wasn't wearing anything. I just, nothing on the bottom. I had nothing on the bottom. No, yeah. it was really just I wore the over the top one. It was yeah. just a cut off. Yeah. No sleeves. Did you, no did sleeves. You cut the, did you cut it off mid? No, no that just was that just, tall. I was just, You're just that I was just tall, a little huh? bigger than what the <laughs> I guess the necessary people usually wear. <laughs> yeah, I can buy right off the rack. I don't know if you can. You can no, probably not. I usually, not. I usually have to buy clothes that. online and yeah, shoes as well. They don't carry my size in stores. All right, so walk me through this, Ryan. You right? Yeah. Walk me through this. Just the mental mindset. Last week. You knew you were going to be in the pivot, um, you know, with Mitch and concussion protocols. So you get a full practice week. That's the best case scenario. Yes, best case scenario. Um, you know, this week, Mitch says he's going to play Monday night. He's out of the protocol. That's all good news. So mm-hmm. you get to go back to guard. Yeah, back to home base. But I think yeah. you got to always have the mindset that center is always a possibility for you because you never know what's going to happen in mm-hmm. a game. So how is how is last week's mindset different from this week's by mindset going back to home base, knowing the possibility exists to flip back into the pivot? You know, I really don't change my mindset depending on the week. Um, I prepare for a game how I usually prepare. Um, if I'm playing center, I might watch a little bit more film just because of the different types of pressures, the, you know, watching the nose guard, what his tails are, you know, where, where his feet are flipped or not, you know, we're just watching the angles. Uh, and I do the same thing as guard, but I think at center – I have to watch like both sides of the ball, yeah. and so I wind up. Right. I find myself watching a little bit more film as opposed to just the right side. Okay. Um, I kind of treat every week, depending, no matter if I'm playing center or guard, the same gotcha. for the most part, with the exception of the fact that the film I just I just mentioned. Um, but I'm I'm always ready to go in at center. You yeah. Know? We, yeah. We spoke uh, to. We heard uh, Ken Dorsey talk today to the media, and they were asking about you know why the bust out game in Chicago and the run game. What are your thoughts about how that happens? Certainly, you guys played really well up front. Mm-hmm. We're getting to the second level and that kind of thing. Plus, you know, whenever you get the backs to the second level, the good thing they weren't even happen. getting touched on half. Mm-hmm. They're at the second level; they haven't even been touched. <clears throat> you yet. knew you knew Chicago had struggled in that going in. How much did film tell you about what you were going to be able to do? Um, so when we got out there on the field. It kind of threw our – because it was going to be so windy, we knew we were going to run in a little bit more because it was so mm-hmm. cold. Um, but the ground kind of changed things because the, the, the grass wasn't – it was concrete. 
Yeah, the footing so was different. I went out there. I think Chicago is notoriously known for not having the best field, especially this late in the year in the season. Um, and then given the weather, the circumstances were, you know, it was negative 15. Yeah. And so it literally felt like you were playing on concrete out there. And so I think it was a little tough for the defenders to, to you know, change, change direction. Okay. Our backs did an unbelievable job of keeping their shoulders under their toes, not getting overextended, not, you know, um, they did a great job cutting and, you know, finding those holes. And because we weren't, we didn't have, you know, the, the starting five, we were shifting around a little bit. We knew communication was going to be a big part of this game, yeah. especially in the run game. And we knew that they, 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 did, they do a lot of 3-5 pirates, a lot of star pressure, a lot of movement up front. And so we, knew, we were aware of that going into the game. And so yeah. we knew we had to keep our shoulders under our toes, be balanced, you know, use our extensions, use our hands as weapons. And that's just exactly what we did, and it all worked out. Yeah, don't right. get over your skis kind of yeah. game. Like, don't do that. Because you couldn't, you couldn't grab the ground with your cleats and – Really it, so it otherwise, like, you'd, it's it almost like, like being on roller skates. If you got over, feel like you're walking on tile. I mean, your cleats didn't dig, you didn't even. Yeah, imagine putting uh, some cleats on and going trying to play basketball on, on the wood floor. Right, that's, that's what yeah, it felt like. That's wow. what, and I'll tell you what, that <clears throat> it happened to me a lot because I only weighed like a buck eighty. For a guy that weighs three bills, mm -hmm. I can't believe your cleats won't even go on the ground. Yeah, it was hard. I, pre game, I put my longer cleats on, thinking it was going to help. It didn't help. It made it worse. Really? Oh, okay. So that's I, went shorter, back, I went back in and I changed my cleats. I, because I have my turf cleats and my grass cleats. My grass cleats are a little bit longer. I might wear the seven studs and my that's, turf cleats. That's, that's crazy. I, went, I did a game in Chicago um, as, a, as a, an analyst, and I'm down there on the field, and this, you know, the grounds guy from Chicago came over and gave me this 10-minute dissertation about how they heat the field to keep it from freezing. Mm. Was uh, it busted? I don't think it was working. It must have been busted. Our, <laughs> our benches were actually not working, our, our heated benches. Oh, my gosh. But they got it working the second half, thank God. But for the first half, we were sitting over there not. It's a little, it sounds a little nefarious, right? A little sketchy, yeah. Um, you got an interesting matchup on the front here. DJ Reader is a load. <laughs> um, yeah, you can say that again. He, yeah. Well, he is. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's a problem for everybody. Um, a guy you guys on the interior have to account for, no doubt. I know Mitch has some familiarity with him. He played against him in the Houston playoff game back in 2019. Hmm. So I know he's seen him before up close and personal. When you have a guy like that that is so difficult to move, because um, those guys aren't a dime a dozen in this league anymore. Those mm -hmm. big gargantuan nose yeah. tackles like we remember, like Ted Washington in the late 90s here in Buffalo, those, two, those true like two-gap guys aren't there and aren't as plentiful, I should say, mm -hmm. anymore. When you run into one, is it, is it an adjustment at least for the first couple of series? Because it's not a guy that you normally see every week, or is it just like, oh, you know, we've seen these guys – here and there before we you know we're ready we have a game plan and we go yeah so we have our game plan we're ready to do what we need to do uh we know what we need to do we know we, we, what we want to do um he at the end of the day you know he's a good defensive lineman yeah i'm not gonna mm -hmm. take that away from him but they're just spots at the end of the day you know we we know we played some great d linemen yeah you know, the kenny clarks the chris joneses mm -hmm. yeah, you know the aaron, Ro aaron donald yes yeah. and so it's nothing we've gone against a bunch of good defensive linemen we're going to go out there. We're going to do our thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck. Well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Of course. It. Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah. Real quick, before you go, though, I, I got to ask you, because I remember when you came here, um, you know, you're an undrafted rookie in Philly. You come here via trade, and I'm in the locker room. It's his first day in, and I was like, well, how you doing? <laughs> How's the flight in? And he's like, my girlfriend is still back uh, in Philly. Yeah. I got to get her up here. We got to find out where we're living. Is it crazy? Like, how crazy is it to think about – that day and like where you are now you know you got a nice contract and you know things are things are rolling for you man you're a week you know you're weak you're in the starting lineup now i mean what what could you have envisioned all of this back then like you oh, have God, goals no. obviously but i tell everyone this uh being getting traded was the best thing at, at the time i had no idea what the heck was going on yeah i right. thought it was a bad thing you know why they don't want me yada yada i'm getting traded it's the best thing that ever could have happened to me you never know where your path's going to go, where your career's going to lead, yeah. and it's all about the opportunity. I got an opportunity. I made the, made the most of it, and <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, made the most of it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so congrats absolutely. to you, congrats and, to you. and you know, you. I know these guys are happy to have you, and we're glad to have you in studio. Thanks for spending some time with oh, us. Of course. Thanks for having me. On Monday night.